الدين السلمي استاذ مساعد الهندسه الصناعيه ومشرف العام على مكتب اداره المشاريع. هنبدا آه اول محاضراتنا مع مع المهندس محمد هشام الزغل هو حاصل على شهاده الماجستير في هندسه فنون الاتصالات في حالات الطوارئ والازمات من الجامعه البحريه للدراسات العليا في الولايات المتحده الامريكيه. بالاضافه الى ذلك يحمل ماجستير اخر في هندسه الاتصالات والشبكات. بدا حياته المهنيه في مجال امن المعلومات والحرب الالكترونيه في القوات المسلحه الاردنيه. وقد حصل على شهادات في امن المعلومات خلال دراسته في الولايات المتحده الامريكيه مثل مدير نظام في امن انظمه المعلومات. جيم محمد. My project proposal is very simple. Uh, it's based on one question. يعني ال السؤال الرئيسي لل للبحث اللي أنا قدمت فيه اليوم هو سؤال بسيط. هل نستطيع أن نتكلم مع بعضنا البعض أن نتواصل مع بعضنا البعض خلال الكارثة أو خلال الحدث الكبير؟ uh, على سبيل المثال عندما يكون هناك حدث كبير مثل الحج. هل جميع الهيئات الداخلة في موضوع الحج مثل الدفاع المدني، وزارة الحج، الهيئات المختلفة، هل تستطيع أن تتكلم مع بعض البعض؟ وعندما نقول نتكلم ليس تتكلم عن طريق الهاتف الخلوي مثلا، يجب أن تكون تتكلم بطريقة مهنية مثل نظام تترا أنظمة مشابهة. Uh, what I said in uh, Arabic uh, was the, the key question for this uh, proposal is uh, are we able to talk to, to each other while there is a big incident uh, like uh, Hajj incident? Many uh, stakeholders take part in, uh, in the Hajj, uh, for example, Civic Defense, uh, Ministry of Hajj, uh, all other parties. Uh, uh, we have to study this. Uh, it's, uh, this is a simple question, but it has many uh, consequences in the, uh, in the background, in the scientific, like uh, or communication-wise. So uh, there, are, there is an example uh, for what I'm talking about in uh, 2001, 9-11 uh, uh, incident. Uh, it was proven that uh, many firefighters uh, lost their lives because of one uh, issue. The, when the uh, firefighters were going to the second uh, bridge, or not bridge, uh, tower, uh, th there were uh, alerts from the police to leave the, uh, the building because it will collapse while the firefighters could not hear that because they don't have uh, access to that uh, alert. It was on another network. So many firefighters died out of that. Uh, the example that I mentioned on the event of September 11th, there were two networks. The network for the police and the police for the police or the police. فالاطفائيين بلشوا يدخلوا بالبرج الثاني لانه ما كان منهار ما زال بعده واقف فالبوليس شافوا انه راح ينهار المبنى واعطوا انذار انه اخلوا فمعظم البوليس طلعوا الفاير فايترز او الاطفائيين ما كانوش على علم باللي قاعد بيصير فانهار المبنى ومات كثير من الاطفائيين بسبب عدم سماحهم للي قاعد بيصير على الشبكه الثانيه اللي هي البوليس المقصود بالدراسة اللي إحنا ممكن نقوم فيها إنه ندرس إمكانية إنه الجهات المختلفة اللي بتشارك بأي حدث كبير أو كارثة كيف ممكن يحكوا مع بعض إذا إذا كان ممكن نحل هاي المشكلة بالوقت الحالي ممكن نحلها إذا كان صعب ممكن انه تندرس انها تنحل على خمس سنوات، لانه احيانا صعب انك انت تغير كل اجهزه الدفاع المدني والله على اساس انه بدهم يحكوا مع البوليس، او نغير كل اجهزه وزاره الحج على اساس بدها تصير تحكي مع وزاره الداخليه. ممكن انه ينعمل خطط ل لما نشتري اجهزه جديده انه تكون متوائم مع بعضها البعض، انه انا لما بدي اشتري اجهزه لازم يكون في جهه مثل هيئه الاتصالات الخاصه اذا موجوده بالسعوديه. 
تحدد مواصفات وتردات للأجهزة اللي بتحكي لازم تحكي مع بعض بحيث إنه بواجب محدد كل الناس تقدر تحكي مع بعض. فتقريبا هاي هي فكرة المشروع. This is the key point of the project and I'm open for discussion. طيب إذا في أحد عنده أي سؤال، في أحد من الأخوات عنده أي سؤال؟ طيب إذا ما في أي سؤال نشترك بش مهندس and we'll go to the our second speaker دكتور كو كو شين and he is going to speak about international center for emergency education training and disaster experience facilities for profession and public دكتور كو شين he is the deputy director the chief and chief engineer from 2004-2012 a uh, professor of earth science, National Earthquake Response Support Service, China Earthquake Administration from 2004 to uh, until now, until now. Deputy, uh, Deputy General Director of the uh, Team Leader of China International, uh, Director Research Center of Digital Disaster Mitigation and Emergency Management, and also he is the uh, TIMS uh, visit, uh, Vice President from 2012 to now. Uh, and the other uh, rest of his bio, you can read it from the book. If you can please go ahead, Dr. Sorry. Thanks a lot for chairman. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here I, I uh, make a project proposal for <coughs> International Center for Emergency Education Training and Disaster Experience Facility for Professional and Public. And uh, uh, just uh, introduced by the chairman, I'm the vice president of the teams, and also the deputy general team leader for uh, China International Search and Rescue Team. And also I work in the uh, in the in the <coughs> Peking University uh, in Beijing. And here uh, I just uh, want to show some uh, background and the general development general developments and classification, and uh, also the case of projects uh, by teams and uh, cooperative organizations in China now. And, uh, and finally, uh, we give the, the suggestion for this project, project for MENA regional countries. So uh, in recent uh, 30 years, there are many uh, natural disasters, public health, working safety, and uh, uh, territory events occurred frequently in the world. Uh, many local governments of the natural or earthquake affected countries have uh, established the nat natural or earthquake disaster training base. And, that, and also uh, the expedition hall and the science and the techno technology hall. And also the exper experience and the practice spaces and education and the training center for professional user team and also for the public. So, and, uh, but, but up to now, the main objectives of many of them are to show how to learn the knowledge and uh, record the, the disaster emergency response procedures or history of the disaster. And some of them to practice with the methods of how to respond and learn from the disasters and also how to save life by the experience. But uh, most of them is uh, for the public awareness education. So and here we re recommended the proposal for, uh, of our project for practice and experience uh, the disaster for the public. So if the disaster occur, what's happened and uh, what's the, what kinds of experience you must be have? And then you can uh, very quickly and efficiently to respond to the disaster. So uh, depends on our uh, uh, service in, in many countries. And last year we have, uh, uh, have a service in Japan, in South Korea, in USA, in China, and Taiwan. And then we find many of the present facilities and the trainings and also the training base, education center. So we, we divide it into five uh, classi classification. And the first one is a science and a technology hall. So as a, before, as a, there are many science and technology hall, halls for 
uh, primary school for middle school students. So they, they get some knowledge and then they, uh, most of the present for, for public in, in China, USA, Taiwan, and other countries. So that is a very uh, pre prelim preliminary uh, education uh, uh, knowledge for them. And the second one is earthquake disaster memory and uh, display or knowledge for or center. For example, uh, in the in Taiwan, there is after the big earthquake in 1999, there are uh, the Chulong Pu earthquake disaster memory and display uh, display and knowledge hall in Taiwan. So it's very uh, excellent and based on the, the collapsed building and based on the the knowledge of the what's the active force occur during the earthquake and what's happened in that time. So hold of this is a, a perfect uh, uh, preserved now. So uh, these kinds of uh, uh, earthquake disaster memory and displays hall is also uh, in China after the big earthquake of two, uh, 2008. And also the third one is a experience center for the public. So most of this experience center is in, in Japan. And we can, we can uh, get a, a practice and experience when you go into the, the hall. And then, uh, for, for example, if the flooding occur, how, to, how will it happen? If the, flood, uh, if the, the, sea, the, the depth of sea waters may be 50 centimeters, it's OK or not, or 70 centimeters. Over the 70 centimeters, you, you couldn't open your, your door of the car. And also, if, uh, if here is a flooding here, so if the, 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 the level of the water is over 70 centimeters, we couldn't open the, the door. So you can practice in the uh, experience, uh, experience center uh, for the public. So most of the Japanese experience center for the public in Kobe, Tokyo and uh, South Korea, so, so like this. But it uh, uh, depends on some events, big events of the earthquake, or flooding, or big fire, fire events. So that's the, the very, uh, uh, depends on the scenario, uh, disaster situation. And, and the fourth one is professional training base and centers for USAR team. USAR teams means urban search and rescue teams. So it, up to now, in, in the whole of the world, uh, UNOCHA organized the uh, ISRAC uh, external certification. Uh, up to now, about uh, 35 uh, USA teams have got the uh, REC or RER in the world. So there are many training base. So uh, like uh, in China, we have a training base. And in USA, there's a disaster city in Texas City. And also the emergency uh, city in the very close to the uh, Atlanta city. So there are many uh, professional training centers for professional USA team members. So that's the fourth one. And also the fifth one is the comprehensive training and education experiments, uh, experience and entertainment center. For example, some of them and will be in China and U in USA. Uh, for example, in the Hol Hollywood, there's a, a very uh, excellent uh, 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 comprehensive uh, 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 practice, sen uh, practice uh, uh, size for, the, for many people. When they uh, go there, they will feel the real uh, on-site, real-time disasters occur just in your, before your, your, your face, your, your eyes, so you can see what's happened but that's just the uh, situation of the disasters. So this, uh, we can uh, classify five parts of them. And also, uh, so depends on this uh, service in China, we have a, a project uh, cooperated with teams and local organization within the, in Shenyang city. So the Shenyang uh, International uh, Center for Emergency Education and Trainings. So with the, the collaboration of other parties, teams will contribute to the following key functions of the International Center for Emergency Education and Trainings. So the first one is build experience and practice area of disaster response 
for the general public, especially earthquake, landslide, uh, debris flow, heavy snowfall, and flood, tsunami, typhoon, fire, gas, exploration, on-site medical and public health. And also the social security and other disasters. Disasters, early warning and simulation and multi uh, dimensional dynamic experience. And also uh, animation and simulation of disaster prevention and, and mitigation. So that's the, the one of the objective. And also the second is use disaster, disaster response simulation, decision making and command center. So this will be a uh, uh, the simulated the real time uh, earthquake on site commanding and uh, incident commanding system, and also the provide professional training, drills, and uh, related facilities, and also create a professional training classroom and a modern conference center, and then provide up, up, up appropriate accommodations for those trainings and uh, the police uh, emergency rescue equipment on display and also provide the large exercises and the drill facilities for the professional user team and uh, especially provided this uh, size for the public. So here is we, we have uh, uh, we, uh, signed this uh, agreement uh, in 2013. So now we just uh, uh, in the process of this project. And uh, so the Shenyang International Center of Emergency Education and Training, that's uh, our president to say this, uh, 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 the concept and uh, the, uh, some words here. And this center will be a center for education and uh, training of professionals in emergency and disaster man management and response as well as uh, demonstration and a learning center for the public and uh, comprising the state of the art technology in simulation training and education tools techniques methods and systems giving the trainees and the visitors a realistic feeling of how to be in a disaster and how to prepare for survival and help, helping those in disaster in these trees and the need to, of help. So that's the main objectives of the center. And so here, uh, last year, we have another uh, case of project by teams and the cooperated uh, organizations in Hangzhou. Uh, it's an international emergency rescue equipment center. So here, as we, we founded the center in the, uh, November, <coughs> In, in, the, in Hangzhou in China. And so here is the, the Hangzhou International Emergency Rescue Equipment Center supported by teams and also supported by the local uh, uh, big company. So in the research center of digital uh, disaster mitigation and uh, emergency management, uh, uh, management of Peking University and also organized by and built by the Xianghong International is a comprehensive communicating platform for emergency rescue equipment and a disaster prediction, detection, technology ex exhibition hall, and uh, also trainings and uh, experience. So and here, so, so here's the project pro uh, progress. So that's here, the center uh, was founded uh, last year. And also the first phase of the project is already completed, in which we have a uh, uh, 3,000 uh, square meters for emergency industry products and uh, technology demonstration. So here you can see the someone, uh, the uh, trainees, just uh, to cut off a, a car. The, there's a, a traffic the accident. So how to save the life from the uh, from an accident uh, uh, car? So as a uh, to cut off the the, uh, the windows of the car. And also, there here is some uh, collapsed building, so they can training by himself with the with some equipment, so cutting, shorting, and uh, like this. So they can use this uh, uh, equipment very easily to to training uh, here. And also, and we have some uh, uh, meeting rooms and also 
we have a, a dining hall with the capacity of uh, 150, 150 people. And more than uh, uh, many uh, uh, equipment uh, manufacturers uh, join now. Now, so we, this uh, here, we have a, uh, uh, here's uh, six uh, floor buildings, and uh, from the first floor to third floor, as a display uh, of the equipment. So the different kinds of equipment, so we have, uh, the now we have the equipment here. So for the pumping of the water, very quickly, and also for the UAV, for, for UAV uh, very quickly to get the information, and also for the waters, for the uh, small board, and also here, tent, and also, uh, here's uh, the rescue board uh, engines. And also we have uh, uh, some, some uh, sp specific uh, vehicle used both in land and water. You can use in the land, and then if in the water, they will change the functions to the water. So that's, uh, we'll very quickly to get the information or transport for the, uh, for the uh, disaster, the people, homeless people. So here is uh, many kinds of the uh, emergency uh, lighting system and uh, personal protection and the smart board in emergency rescue and uh, portable water uh, purifying equipment. So if the disaster occur, there may be uh, pollution for the for disaster. So we need the uh, equipment very quickly and uh, to, to supply the, the pure water for uh, homeless people. And also on-site uh, on commanding and uh, systems. So we have the old weather disaster information collection, transmission and decision making system. If the big disaster occur, there are normally there are no communication. And uh, the communication, the local will be cut, cut down. So we, we must uh, establish a new communication system on site of the disaster. So we, we can give the commanding and coordination by the new uh, communication system. <coughs> so here some uh, uh, weather monitoring. So if the big fog occur, if there are no uh, electric uh, supply, so that we in that very dark uh, uh, night, so we, we also we can get the information through the dark sky. And uh, this, uh, we, we can use the here, uh, this kind of always information collection in the users. We can use here, we can use in the helicopters, and we can with hand and also in the car. So you can use in the different or in the board. You can use in the different uh, uh, usage. And so here, the functions of the center, search and rescue area, communication command, command equipment area, special emergency vehicle area, water search and rescue equipment area, electricity emergency equipment support uh, area, and uh, also railway emergency equipment, outdoor equipment, and simulated equipment. So here is the, the present uh, functions of the of the center but also we uh, we we will uh, this year we will uh, uh, also to uh, uh, contribute to these centers as a uh, uh, academic communication platform of uh, emergency management so we have a training base for rescue teams so we will uh, enlarge of this area and uh, give some uh, uh, decision making uh, and uh, the making system, and also the site to purchase by the pu public. So here is uh, the disaster prevention and emergency uh, escape, and also the uh, promotion of the uh, disaster rescue equipment. And also the solution package for different uh, disasters. So for the floodings, for the uh, collapse, collapse of buildings, and so, for the electric power equipment, so here, and also a solution package for the different uh, customers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So it's also the solution, the package for different uh, customs here. Emergency supply trucks. So and then here uh, depends on our experience, uh, the cooperation teams with uh, some uh, uh, companies in, in China. We recommended this project, the proposal for MENA regional countries. So the project obje objectives, all kinds of disasters have been occur in the Middle East and the North Africa area. And so here we suggest the project for MENA chapter, especially for the uh, South Arabia and uh, uh, Middle East and Northern Africa countries to build the international integrated disaster scenario simulation on emergency management and the training and the experience based for center or centers for the public. And that is the international center of, for emergency education training and disaster experience facility for profession and public cooperate with teams. So and also teams HR office and also we have uh, uh, international in the industry allies to we, we have uh, more resources to support this uh, project. So here's the, for the different disasters and concern and also the main contents of the task. For the public disaster response security experience, experience halls and the international emergency uh, rescue ex, ex, equipment exhibition center and also finally the international national professional emergency rescue training and the training, training base. So here's, uh, you can find a uh, hold of the proposal in the, in the box and the translate here. <coughs> so here's the project uh, construction and also the project tech support. So we have the uh, several support from the teams from the International Emergency Industry Technology Innov Innovation Strategy Alliance and also from the Peking University and from others. So this is my suggestions for uh, MENA region, regional uh, uh, project. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. For your presentation and the proposal. Now I'm giving the chance for the audience if they have any questions or comments. So please go ahead. Who has a question or a comment? Do you have any comments from the peer uh, section? Yes, please. Go ahead. ما مدى دور تفعيل التقنيات الحديثة والسوشيال ميديا في تحذير ويعني في إدارة الأزمات في تحذير الناس من الحوادث والطوارئ والكوارث قبل حدوثها وهل هي فعالة في الواقع وهل تحد بالفعل من خسائر وخصوصا يعني في حالة انقطاع الاتصالات أو يعني ما هو دورها وفعاليتها؟ السوشيال ميديا during the disaster occur. It will be very uh, uh, give a powerful uh, support for the disaster uh, response. So uh, normally, we in, in <coughs> after the uh, after disaster, and uh, we can get the many information from the media, and also uh, the so social media will be uh, uh, so we can we can know uh, the, in the in the disaster area. What's the uh, the local uh, residents or homeless people? What's the, the activities of them? And what's the uh, the response of them? So you can uh, we can get the report uh, from the social media to to uh, give a report or, or debriefings to the uh, OSAC or to the commanding or coordination center. And let the, the commanders to know what happens in the disaster area. So th th this will be a very useful uh, uh, methodology by the media or social media. And also, you know, uh, if the, the big catastrophe occur, normally in the, the disaster area, uh, there are some uh, security and safety program, security and, and safety program. So. Uh, 
the social media will give this uh, information very quickly to the uh, to the, <coughs> uh, the public and to the uh, uh, the uh, other societies, uh, other uh, international government. So uh, so there will be uh, will be uh, give the uh, the solutions for the uh, disaster area. For, for example. Uh, during the heavy earthquake, during the heavy earthquake, there are the big problem. Not only for safe life, but the big problem, big problem is the security and the safety. So when the USA teams uh, have a, a operation uh, for saving life, they must have the peacekeeping soldiers to keep the safety. So that's the, the for the for the catastrophe normally. Big, big, big uh, problem for the social problem. So I think the many, 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 and also social media will be very useful uh, to uh, give the information and also to uh, give the, uh, give the, the first give the information for the commanders and the coordinators, and also give the information for the public what's happened. And but, but as uh, uh, will for the uh, this information. It, it, Will be very important for the necessary uh, for the public, for the society, let them to know what's the needs of the disaster area. So maybe many times, many uh, medical care uh, mobilized teams will be uh, will be to the to the uh, disaster on site. So okay. help to solve yeah. them, yeah. solve the problems. Just to give fun. هو بس للتوضيح هذا البلايستيشن هذه هي كلها ايش؟ يعني بروبوزال مشاريع مقترحه هم سوف يعني حيسووها ف اني ون هاز ان انترست تو مين بارتيسيبيت ان ذا بروجكت ذي ار ويلكمينج اني بارتيسيبيشن فاي عادل في الملف في موجود كتاب حق كرسي الامير مدن بن عبد العزيز مشاريع الحاله المقترحه فاذا حد يعني عنده اي رغبه في المشاركه اعتقد ان المجال مفتوح وال ممكن تتواصلوا مع المشرف على الكرسي وعميد كلية الاقتصاد والإدارة الدكتور أيمن فاضل. Now if you have any other comments before we go to the our third speaker. Okay. No thank you. Okay. Now we we'll go to our uh, third speaker, uh, Dr. Tom Robertson. Uh, he is going to talk about investigation of online international learning and certification to improve disaster uh, resilience in, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It's an, also a proposal. So, Dr. Uh, Thompson is uh, directing the North American operation of the International Emergency Management Society, where he founded the Teams USA local chapter. He is the technical manager for the teams in the European Union asset program. Uh, Dr. Tom is the founder and principal at uh, Thinking Teams, an international consultancy to, uh, to leaders and organizations seeking uh, high-performance teams dealing with uh, complexity, uncertainty, and risk. Uh, Dr. Tom earned a PhD degree in the electrical engineering from Bordeaux University, where he did research in the bioengineering, the communications, and artificial intelligence. At uh, Bell Laboratories, he, de uh, he developed the new techniques for monitoring and troubleshooting system failure, he performed and led uh, advanced research and development in the simulation, image processing, advanced computing, artificial intelligence, and system engineering in the rules, uh, including associated uh, technical uh, uh, in the rules, including associate uh, technical group director. So please uh, go ahead, Dr. Tom. You have uh, 20 minutes. Thank you very much. Earlier in the session, uh, we talked about the importance of education for emergency preparedness. Uh, that's important to uh, any uh, local place, including uh, Saudi Arabia, and it's also important internationally. So this proposal is about um, an opportunity that the Prince Megrin chair has to play a key role in uh, education, both to educate 
Saudi Arabians in making them better prepared for emergencies and also playing a role to support uh, better global resilience. I'm going to talk uh, briefly about uh, some background um, and I'm going to put this in the context of uh, TEAM's educational program because this um, is uh, a strong basis for uh, this proposal and it provides an important context both for the, the specifics of what I'll be talking here as well as some expanded opportunities for uh, the, uh, the university to participate with the international community in uh, education. This has been uh, talked about uh, throughout our, our days here that uh, disaster preparedness is increasingly important. A, a key premise of teams and this research proposal is that uh, we can all learn from each other. Uh, Saudi Arabia can uh, teach other nations uh, about some of the hard lessons they've learned, particularly in uh, massive events, for example, such as uh, you encounter in the, the Hajj pilgrimage. Uh, in addition, uh, Saudi Arabia will face uh, disasters and other emergencies that uh, are perhaps r very rare in Saudi Arabia but are experienced in other parts of the world more often and so there's an opportunity there to uh, gain information and uh, learn and be better prepared. Uh, another aspect of education is that uh, the better, the more we communicate and the more we put education on an international basis, this will facilitate collaboration. One of the points that came up uh, yesterday was the idea of terminology and how uh, important it is that uh, a base of terminology is translated into local languages in a way that really does reflect um, uh, both the original intent and its application locally. So TEAMS has uh, long had a, a strong goal in education and uh, we very much have uh, taken to our mission the importance of spreading information, uh, learning from each other internationally, and uh, improving the uh, profession of emergency management from an international perspective. TEAMS has uh, for some time now had a program that's incorporated a number of important elements that will be uh, pertinent to the, what we're proposing here. Um, our goal has always been to put an international focus, both in terms of uh, allowing locales to uh, bring to bear uh, the international community's knowledge on their particular problem, and also to foster international collaboration. Uh, we have wanted to uh, also connect the communities of uh, advanced research and development and engineering and so forth with practitioners. And uh, to make sure that uh, societies are prepared for uh, emergency management through access to information and education through all levels of uh, uh, population from young, young to old. Uh, another important thing that uh, we are addressing is international certification. Uh, it turns out that there are currently no uh, good means to, uh, s to develop a, a certification in international emergency management that can apply uh, across the world and help standardize uh, the, and enhance collaboration across the, uh, the country. So uh, these, are, these are among the objectives that the team's <coughs> education, training, and certification program has had for some time. And uh, uh, 
there are a number of elements here that are very important. One is that we've, been, we've developed a pool of international teachers and trainers and uh, a set of courses that can be used uh, that apply generally across the world and also uh, courses that are adapted uh, locally. Uh, and in addition, the team's certification of qualifications in international emergency and disaster management, QIEDM. Uh, this is the, the uh, international certification that I've uh, mentioned. Um, we have been working to establish uh, international uh, centers of excellence in emergency management education that adhere to uh, the standards we are developing, share information, and provide uh, students uh, uh, opportunities to uh, become familiar and uh, become educated, degreed, and certified in uh, emergency management with an international perspective. Uh, one of the opportunities that uh, uh, King Abdul Aziz University has, uh, uh, particularly uh, because of its new thrust with the Prince Megrin chair, is to become part of that network of excellence. And uh, this proposal will, uh, the proposed research here, will be a, a, a great start there and uh, one element of uh, uh, bringing, uh, allowing the university to contribute to the international community and to bring uh, uh, the international community's knowledge, uh, make it accessible to uh, their students. Uh, yeah, so we have covered that. So here's what we're talking about. The, this proposal is to work on a research project that will do two things. One is it will provide an effective way to collect international knowledge on an, in an emergency management and an effective way to allow access to that by uh, students in uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia as well as internationally and to provide a basis for international certification in emergency management that will uh, allow uh, uh, students and practitioners within uh, Saudi Arabia to uh, achieve this certification, a certification they will then share in common with uh, other practitioners across the globe, uh, enhancing the level of knowledge overall and also the opportunity for collaboration. So uh, this uh, fits within the mission of the Prince Meglin Chair, uh, it provides an opportunity to enhance uh, the preparedness of Saudi Arabia because education is so fundamental. It uh, enhances the education here by making available uh, international knowledge and it provides an opportunity for Saudi Arabia to be a leader within the world community in uh, collecting and disseminating and standardizing international emergency management. Uh, knowledge. So the objectives here are to identify uh, a core in a systematic way, a co the core set of emergency management knowledge, how it applies to different levels uh, in the organizations that uh, are responding to emergencies, uh, to develop, to take advantage of online means to develop a means to test and certify emergency management knowledge, uh, to identify uh, accessible collections of knowledge that this uh, system can draw on to produce a prototype online emergency management uh, learning system that uh, can be the basis for future work that would allow this knowledge base to be grown and to continue to be used. Uh, here's uh, an outline of the, the particular steps. Uh, in terms of developing this knowledge base and standards for certification, as I mentioned before, 
the notion of uh, uh, the university participating as part of uh, the team's network of uh, uh, excellent uh, centers of excellence in emergency management education will allow us in this project to tap into this international knowledge and uh, I think you'll be hearing more about some opportunities there with um, uh, this work. Uh, so we'll identify this strong core and then an important part of the research is okay how does this need to be tailored to localities? Another part is all right given that this is the body of knowledge that uh, we want to go after how is what's the best way to certify what's an efficient way to be able to do this online because we know this is a key to accessibility we want to make certification like this available everywhere uh, in areas where uh, not people not, cannot necessarily have the means to be able to travel to specialized facilities. Um, we believe that uh, efficient software can be used to, within the scope of this research project, efficiently develop a uh, prototype, uh, perhaps with the aid of uh, students here at the university, and to try it out on practitioners and students and get some preliminary results of its effectiveness. So in conclusion, uh, we believe this, uh, this project that we propose will uh, establish a solid foundation for improving the preparedness of uh, Saudi Arabia, which is uh, an important goal of the, the Prince Megrin chair. And uh, it will allow uh, this country to benefit from uh, international knowledge and the development of joint standards. And uh, it, it will fit in. I know that uh, the university already has an e-learning and uh, distance education environment, uh, and this could well be incorporated into it. And uh, as a plus, it will help establish the university as well as the chair as uh, one of the leaders in emergency management education uh, internationally. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tom, uh, for the nice uh, proposal. And then um, giving the chances also for the audiences if they have any questions or uh, comments regarding the proposal. Yes, please go ahead. نتمنى إن شاء الله إنه هذا المركز يكون على أرض الواقع بالقريب العاجل إن شاء الله. لكن هل ممكن يكون من الأهداف تقييم مدى الجهوزية وضع فرضيات للحوادث كجهة مستقلة يقوم أداء الأجهزة المختلفة في الحكومة وفي القطاعات الأخرى مدى الاستجابة ويحدد الأخطاء كجهة مستقلة. وتكون الفرضية يعني غير معلنة في فجأة يعلن فرضية معينة مثلا زلزال مواد مشعة أو شيء ويشوف مدى الاستجابة ويقيم الوضع ومدى جهوزية الأجهزة شوف. I think that uh, in a, an important part that I had thought of before we had thought of before was to identify the specific needs of Saudi Arabia and uh, I think this is an excellent way to prioritize uh, the development of uh, these educational materials. I think they should target uh, areas where uh, an assessment says Saudi Arabia needs more education in, the, in these particular areas. Thank you, uh, Yes, Dr. Brahim, go ahead. Uh, in this e-learning, are you targeting degree programs or you are targeting the professionals? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? Are you targeting uh, professionals or students enrolled in degree programs? So by the end of, by the, end of the uh, training, you'll give them a degree or give them a diploma or whatever? Yes, uh, targeting uh, students as well as professionals, I would I think that uh, the uh, chair could be involved in uh, post-graduate uh, operational training, perhaps, of uh, emergency management uh, professionals who would like to uh, get 
uh, certified and get um, more uh, an update on technology and so forth. And I can imagine that this knowledge base and this online system could eventually become uh, general enough that one might uh, even create versions of it that would be uh, useful in elementary school to educate the general public. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from the guest section? No, thank you. Do you have any other questions here? Yes, there is one question here, please. Okay, go ahead, please. السلام عليكم. عليكم السلام. آه، سؤال بالنسبة للقائمين على كرسي العمل، أنا لاحظت إن كل الـ البروبوزل المتقدمة بتتكلم عن كوارث يعني طبيعية أو كوارث، مفيش مفيش موضوع متعلق بالكوارث المالية أو الفاينانشال كرايسيس يعني، مع إنها مؤثرة ومهمة يعني. طيب هذا آه، هذا السؤال المشرف على الكرسي واعتقد اذا ممكن تتواصلوا مع سعاده العميد الدكتور ايمن فاضل اعتقد انه ممكن ايش؟ حيجاوب على هذا السؤال. شكرا. عفوا. في احد عنده اي سؤال ثاني؟ تفضل. بالتاكيد كل دولة لها خاصيتها لها ديموغرافيتها لها ازماتها المملكة العربية السعودية طبعا قد تكون لها ازمات خاصة فيها هل يكون هناك بناء لدورات متخصصة لبيئة المملكة العربية السعودية وتتنبأ بالازمات اللي موجوده فيها وهي قد تختلف عن الازمات الموجوده في العالم. شكرا. شكرا. Yes, that, that's a very good point. And it is one of the reasons this makes a good research project. I think the chair can uh, do a service by examining the full body of emergency management knowledge and identifying for Saudi Arabia, for the kingdom, uh, which parts uh, are adaptable and useful as they are to Saudi Arabia because there are certainly lessons learned in other nations that will be useful and also where uh, the kingdom will need to develop its own uh, additional expertise perhaps drawing on the international community, because I know there are researchers throughout the world who uh, will be interested in uh, solving some of the particular problems uh, Saudi Arabia may have. For example, at the break, I was talking to someone about simulation of behavior that is really realistic, the way that crowds behave in Saudi Arabia. And I know there are behavioral scientists who would uh, love to tackle that problem. And I think that international cooperation might be very helpful here. Thank you, Dr. I think we still have one opportunity for our last question. Uh, if you have any question from the girls section. No, thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we'll go with uh, I mean, the fourth speaker, Dr. Carl Tyler. He's going to talk about strengthening public health response, development of an effective uh, medical uh, surge, capacity management approach in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Uh, Dr. Khan, he is the founding partner of the uh, Farsar Institute for the Health uh, Risk and Analytics, uh, Princeton, New Jersey-based think, th uh, think tank. Their work focuses on emer uh, emerging trends in risk, uncertainty, market dynamics, and innovation. He uh, also serves as the CEO of CEDAR uh, Global, a company focused on the development and deployment of the tools to enhance uh, uh, situ uh, situational awarenesses and disaster responses during the natural occurrences outbreak. Uh, Carl is a former assistant dean of the University of South Alabama College of Medicine, as well as the director of the Center for Strategic Health Innovation. 
and the executive director for the National Center for Disaster Medical Responses. He, uh, he holds an undergraduate degree from the Marshall University and George uh, Doctor from the University of Miami. He is also a fellow in the Royal Society of Medicine. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, and thank you. You know, it's interesting when uh, Professor Drager asked me if I would put a proposal together to uh, be part of this program, uh, and I suggested surge capacity management. Uh, I was not really honestly quite sure that that fit neatly into everything that we were talking about. And then Tuesday, we had an opportunity to spend almost three hours together on this topic, and then yesterday, I heard a wonderful presentation from Dr. Simbawa on the, uh, the role of the hospital and during the floods. And I listened to everything he said and I said, it, it resonates. There's so much commonality between your experiences and ours. And so perhaps this is a, a worthy topic for research, smaller certainly in size and scope and scale than I think that uh, um, projected from our dear friend from China or even I think from Tom, but I think nevertheless very important. You know, medical care, Injuries and illnesses are the one common denominator from every disaster, no matter how caused, no matter whether it's man-made or it's natural, the guarantee is that people will be injured, that they will need care, that they may be displaced or they may be deceased, as we learned yesterday as well. And so it's an opportunity to focus on the one common denominator of all disasters, no matter how caused. Surge capacity is needed because it's that moment in time when healthcare professionals must do more for more people, but in many cases under much more difficult circumstances with far fewer resources, so it becomes critical that the ability of your medical community can respond to your needs during a time of crisis and disaster in this community. Now, I have a slightly ambitious goal. I listened yesterday as two or three people came up to Andrea Zimone after he had done his talk with the World Bank. And the question that they asked Andrea was, where should we look in the Middle East for guidance around disaster preparedness? And you might have heard Andrea give an answer, well, you know, you could look at Morocco for the way that they're financing, or maybe look at Lebanon for how they're managing. I, my goal at the end of this project is very simple. When Andrea gets on an airplane tomorrow and goes to Lebanon, and Lebanon asks him, where should we look for the gold standard of best of breed, best development, best response for medical care in a disaster in the Middle East or prospectively globally, I want Andrea to say, oh, that's easy. You look at the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and you look at King Abdulaziz University. I think it's an opportunity to dream big about a very important project, and I actually think it's doable. I think it's doable because what I've heard since Tuesday is that the Center for Crisis and Disaster uh, Management is well established and on its way in a five-year plan, so they're beginning to harness the people together. I've heard that there's an outstanding, obviously, College of Medicine here. Clearly, there's an outstanding hospital with fantastic and wonderful, excellent physician leadership that can be harnessed. And oh, by the way, back to the question earlier, there's a very close correlation between economics and disasters. And so this afternoon, when I give my longer presentation, I'm going to present an economic formula for how we rationalize how we spend and invest to try and reduce the implications of outbreaks and pandemics, and that applies to other disasters as well. And so you've got to involve the College of Economics and Administration at the table in this as well, because economics are often a financial disaster that actually outweighs even the number of people who become ill or injured. I'm going to try and be quick with this because I realize that we're really taking something we really spent three hours on and compressing it down into a proposal. But this is really about a study about how we're going to deliver care, and it begins with a very simple principle that is really not very simple. The simple principle is that the goal of your healthcare system during a disaster is to maximize the numbers of lives saved. But as we had a question that was asked of us Tuesday about bioethics, you realize that sometimes in disasters, the role of saving lives becomes very difficult. You realize that you have to make choices, to be honest, of who you care for and who you leave behind. 
That's a subject of study. It's a study of debate. It's a study of practice. It's a study of capabilities. And interestingly enough, the stronger and more resilient your system, the more people that you can save. And so this is a worthy time and mission, I think, to spend time on what we're doing. You want to ask questions. You want to ask questions. How can we expand our services during unnormal conditions? How can we meet this sudden sustained growth of patients and the community coming to our doors for care under very difficult conditions? How can we meet the demands for public health? And oh, if we're impacted, how can we actually reduce services or transfer patients elsewhere? It requires a community, it requires collaboration, it requires dialogue, it requires study, it requires a system, it requires thought, it requires practice, it requires training, it requires exercise, and then you are ready, hopefully, when things occur. I shared a series of pictures on Tuesday. This happens to be a hospital in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, in which the massive tornado damage that day was no further away from the hospital than I am to the banners here at the, uh, at the big, at back of the auditorium. That hospital became the focal point not only for the care for the thousands of people impacted by the storm, but for the hundreds of people that came to the hospital because they had nowhere else to go. I heard that yesterday in Dr. Zabawa's presentation about the community coming to the hospital. Hospitals oftentimes are the beacons in communities because they're standing and they're there and the community will come because they're asking about loved ones or they're simply looking for food or for shelter or for compassion or psychological or emotional care. How do we do that during a large-scale disaster? Or even worse, what I heard yesterday, and this happens to be a picture, a month later, after the Dothan and Tuscaloosa, Alabama tornadoes, a tornado hit Joplin, Missouri. It happened to footprint the hospital directly. They had moved all of their ambulances onto the grounds. They had moved all of their air evacuation onto the grounds, and the ambulance destroyed it all. What I heard yesterday from Dr. Zimbabwe's test uh, testimony or presentation was 10 more centimeters of water, and all of a sudden, perhaps the power might have been lost. What would have happened had those floods actually been more impactful of the hospital itself. In Joplin's case, they had to then transfer all of their patients out. But in order to transfer them, they realized they had lost all of their medical transport. And so you're having to study how would we do that, and you came so close in 2009, perhaps, to having that discussion. What about if it's a slightly different type of accident? What if it's an accident in which you have to, you're required to do a lot of decontamination? What if it's a chemical plant or an oil refinery? What if it's a chemical spill or a radiation event? How will we manage these discrete patients that have requirements even before we can care for them to be able to decontaminate them? And we've certainly heard over the last two days what happens if there's an event during the Hajj and during there's a time in which there are literally millions of people in the kingdom and your resources are there and they're ready but suddenly something happens that requires a broad distribution of patients and a broad response and a great deal of help and assistance, how would we support that kind of an event? What happens if other hospitals in your catchment area, in your service area, in, in Jeddah, what if they close? What if they're unable to stay open? How would King Abdulaziz Hospital suddenly embrace their patients as well and all of their needs at the same time of trying to meet your own needs? We saw in Katrina, as we talked about Tuesday, that only three hospitals, only three out of the entire city were able to stay open. All of the others were closed because of the damage from flooding, and those three went through truly heroic efforts to stay open. How do we meet the needs of others? Today, there is care being delivered here in Jeddah, outside of the hospitals. How will we meet that care if that care is interrupted? How does oncology care and cancer care continue? How does dialysis care continue? How do the care for the elderly continue if we have a widespread disaster? We've talked a lot about earthquakes over the last two or three days, but it's not just the trauma and the orthopedic injuries, but what we have seen is that earthquakes create a huge homeless problem in the U.S. and through the U.N. language we may call them involuntarily displaced persons. What happens when we have large numbers of involuntarily displaced persons 
that now require care and perhaps now are beginning to take on additional illness. We saw in Haiti, Haiti very early, was orthopedic injuries. It was trauma and closed head injuries. But then as the rains came, then all of a sudden we had a cholera outbreak. And so there was this secondary illness. What had happened if the waters had stayed and if mosquitoes had been born, if disease had continued? How would we think further into the disasters about what might happen? We talked Tuesday about the federal building in Oklahoma that was bombed in which all of the patients all went to one hospital and yet there were other qualified, competent hospitals waiting for patients that never came. Why? Because the ambulance crews had been trained to take the patients to the closest hospital. And nobody ever anticipated that the closest hospital may be overwhelmed with the number of injuries to say, we can't accept any more patients. How do we get to that point where if we say we can't take any more, where do they go? And how do they get there? What are the ground rules and the relationships that have to be built in order to distribute patients? There was a bit of luck, as we heard yesterday in the 2009 floods, and that was that it happened to be the Hajj break for the university. We talked again Tuesday about the seawall. It was a Korean ferry that sank that was full of children. 300 deaths, but another 100 children that had to be treated and cared for. And what would have happened at the university had the school been in session and if you had actually had to deal not just with the ill or injured students, but their very anxious parents that want to know how they're doing or their friends that want to know how they're doing. There's a, there's a whole different response structure required when you're dealing with young people and in terms of meeting not only their needs, but the needs of their parents seeking care and seeking compassion to know what's going on. How are we prepared here in Jeddah for fires and events that create unique, unique conditions that require burn centers? I mentioned on Tuesday again how difficult it is to, for any community, no matter how big and no matter how well prepared, to have enough availability within the community to really meet a large scale event in which you have a lot of fire damage and burn damage. How would we do that? We also talked a lot on Tuesday that there's this wonderful opportunity and in fact there was a question from the audience in which they said, well how are you going to deal with using public health records and you know, EMR records, uh, electronic medical records? And I said, I hope at the very least you can begin to use those records to understand the health needs of your community before a disaster strikes. We know sandstorms trigger respiratory ailments, but I believe we, know who we can know who those patients are so that before a sandstorm is coming, we can use social media, we can reach out to them and say, look, the weather tells us a stand sandstorm is coming, perhaps you should stay inside, because if you go outside, we know you are at risk for respiratory ailments. So can we lean forward into a disaster and actually reduce the number of patients likely to come to us. Also, can we tell the positive stories? Uh, we, we talked again on Tuesday about what a wonderful job the hospital has done with MERS. It's, it's absolutely astounding in a positive way that no healthcare workers have become ill from MERS and the coronavirus while treating so many coronavirus impacted patients. That is a positive story, not just to be studied, but to be disseminated. I'll talk a little bit more about that this afternoon, how I wish that what you've done here becomes known well beyond here. It would have been nice to have been known in the early days in West Africa and the early Ebola outbreaks about best practices in terms of how to, how to drive care. And if you do this, and if you do the study, and we understand what's required, then you're going to be prepared when, well, when it happens again. It may be a flood, it may be a natural hazard, but what we know is that you know, it will occur again. And there is an opportunity for us to, to take what we've already built, to take the relationships that you have, and to look at how we can optimize our surge capacity, that's numbers cared for, how we can optimize our surge capability, and those are the unique caring conditions that we have to be able to do. How long do we need to stay open? How much of a burden do we have to assume? How do we continue to manage care for our existing patients? Dr. Zimbabwe again yesterday in his excellent presentation talked about canceling elective procedures. and That's a wonderful thing to do because it takes pressure off of your facilities. How do we make those decisions early 
so that we are freeing up capacity for the new patients that will be coming to us? And how do we realize that as we're delivering this care, perhaps we're delivering it under circumstances that are different than we would before the disaster occurred? How do we realize what's happening in our community? And how do we reach out to our community for help when we need them? When in fact, when we're flooded, what we need to do is perhaps reach out to the community for boats or for four-wheel drive vehicles to be able to transport our, um, our patients or be able to transport our workers in. How do we know how to effectively reach our community and how do we effectively know how to embrace and use volunteers, many of whom perhaps we did not know before an event occurred? How do we know to recognize and to be prepared for changes during the course of the year that realize that during the Hajj, during the pilgrimage, when you have far more people coming to your communities, that there is a need for heightened readiness, that not every day is the same in the life of your hospital because the circumstances around you will change. I heard the wonderful question asked of Tom, I think, about their, um, our, our cue about the social media. And it's such a wonderful area for study. How do we use social media effectively? I was going to, I have to tell a, a cute story quickly if I have a couple of minutes. New York, as Hurricane Sandy is approaching, uh, decides that they're going to be the leader in using social media for being able to respond to Sandy. And so the New York City Fire Department, in fact, announces that if you have any questions about what's going on with Sandy, all you have to do is tweet us and we'll be able to respond. You can now have this Twitter relationship between you and your fire department, because after all, it's New York, right? So they can do everything better than anyone else. That's what they'll tell you. Unfortunately, they made a small mistake after they published that. They only assigned one person to work the social media desk who had the unfortunate name of Sandy. And so she had the same name as the storm, and the storm is coming by. And all of a sudden, all of these tweets are coming in, and the first act that I can actually attribute to Sandy is she got up and quit. And so what we realize is that when we talk about social media, that you've got to have a study about how, what do we want to send. But if we're going to get information back, you have to realize there's, whoops, excuse me, there are three Vs. One is the volume. How many messages are we going to get? In Haiti, I think we got something like, 24 messages per second every minute of every day for weeks on end. And the amount of information coming in to us in Haiti far outstripped our ability to understand it. So there was a volume that we were not prepared to deal with. There was a velocity, and we saw in Haiti that was an urgency. I'm trapped under the rubble. So it's not just this volume that's coming in, but there's a time urgency to get to the messages and understand who do you have to respond to. And then there's an accuracy point. We've learned a great deal that not every message that you get came from the person that is who you say they are with the needs they say they have that are where they are. And so you've got to understand the value of those messages coming in. For an old guy, I am a huge believer in social media. But I can also tell you that if you're going to deploy it from a disaster perspective, you must study, you must test, you must learn, and you must come to grips with how it works. In Indonesia, tell one quick story using text messaging. The Indonesians are spectacular at text messaging. And so as, as a, they had a tsunami warning in the text message, there's a tsunami warning, and all of a sudden, literally, Millions of people are running up this mountain because they've been told to get the to higher ground. The problem is the mountain they're running up is an active volcano. And I got a call from one of the relief agencies saying, can you calculate the speed of the lava flow that might come down in the middle of the people that are running up the mountain? And so if you're going to use social media, please be right in the directions that you give to the people using it. That in and of itself is a study. So where does staff come from? Uh, one minute. Okay, where does... We, where does supply come from? Where did transportation come from? Can we use alternate facilities? How do we develop leadership? How do we develop leadership? And I think in my last slide, let me just zip to this one, and it is this. How do we improve our situational awareness so that we become aware of events before they occur? And then how do we reach outside of, of the King Abdulaziz University family and infrastructure of its programs, its hospitals and doctors, how do we reach out into our community 
so that we can begin to share lessons and build community resilience, realizing that when a widespread disaster occurs, we are all in this to try and do better together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Nice presentation and proposal. Now, I'm giving also the chances for the audiences if they have any questions or comments. I would like to thank all our distinguished speakers. Uh, um, Engineer Mohammed al Zahid, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ku, Dr. Tom, and Dr. Ka, uh, Tyler. And I think that I'm going to be able to get the name of 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 أعتقد إنه له فرصة مواتية للمشاركة في هذا البروبوزل وهذا هو الكتاب حق الأبحاث المقترحة ممكن تقرأوا كثير أكثر عن المشاريع المقترحة واللي عنده مشاركة ممكن يتواصل مع المشرف على كرسي سعادة العميد الدكتور أيمن فاضل